Well, as we move through the D1 preview of college baseball, very excited to have our next guest from the western part of the state, the Catamounts, Western Carolina, Coach Bobby Miranda. Coach, how are you? Doing great. Doing great. Thanks for having me. Certainly. I was just telling you right before our interview that uh, very excited for this time of year. Uh, some people are more worried about Valentine's Day, but for me, I know that if it's close to Valentine's Day, that means it's the start of college baseball. I know that you've got to, as a coach, that you're obviously want to tinker around and do more stuff but at the same time. I know you and your guys and staff want to go ahead and start play some baseball. Absolutely. We're ready to go. I mean, we've inter-squatted uh, three games already. we got another three this weekend and, uh, yeah, we're ready to roll, man. I mean, it's uh, it's been way too long, right? <laughs> it's been way too long for these kids and our the coaches and everybody. So excited to get on the road, do the thing, all that. So it's, it's going to be fun. Yeah. What uh, can you tell us uh, for those uh, to catch us up as far as fall ball? Uh, how do things? You're talking about the inner uh, Scott squad practices and scrimmages. How did uh, how are things looking going into the season for the 21 campaign? So we, um, you know, we had a good fall, you know, like everyone else. I mean, we were delayed because of the COVID uh, right. stuff and everything like that. But, um, you know, we got some, some, some time in. We did have a little bit of a shutdown at some point, you know, during the, during the fall where we had to, you know, you know take a couple of weeks off. And I, that was almost across the board, you know, throughout the United States in college baseball, talking to a lot of friends of mine. So. Uh, but we got it up and running, and, and we did a bunch of stuff at the end, the last three weeks. So uh, we feel pretty good about the work we had. Um, you know, having to really review some more team stuff because I thought we were, um, you know, we didn't play quite as many inter-squad games as, as I would have liked. So we're, um, you know, trying to put some of that stuff, uh, you know, in every day, you know, here in the spring, or I guess winter, whatever you want to call it. But yeah. we call it spring, so – um, you know, we started team practice last Friday, you know, we're doing individuals for two weeks before that. Um, and, uh, you know, we're rolling right into it. We played 32 innings, I believe last weekend, and, you know, we'll be playing around 40 something innings this week, I, I believe. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's go time. I know that you guys have uh, coming up, you're going to have, going to be at Mercer, uh, what do you know about them? I know you're not going to give us t too much uh, here, but uh, that's how you start off the season. No, well, that's actually our conference schedule. I'm they sorry. didn't release our non-conference schedule. I think oh, that's, that's coming out this week because of all the COVID stuff with people canceling and adding and everything. They tried to wait through the last possible moment. But, uh, yeah, we open up with Mercer in our league, uh, you know, in March, I think the middle of March. Um, but, uh, as far as our, our first game, we play home here against Townsend, uh, okay. a four game set on the 19th of February. Uh, we'll play a single game and then a double header Saturday and then a single game Sunday. And that's our first weekend series. And then we go to Wilmington the next weekend, uh, with Asheville in between as a midweek. Um, and then, uh, it's a three game set at Wilmington. And then I believe we play Davidson at Davidson and then at UNC Charlotte for a three game set. And then we come back here uh, to play St. John's on the weekend. And then we're into conference after that. So it's four weeks of non-conference and then right into the, the, the conference schedule. Speaking of the conference, are you guys doing the, uh, like the American for East Carolina and other leagues where you're doing uh, basically like a week, the weekend will be a four game uh, weekend? We are not, but we, we, uh, we're going to a 10-week uh, conference schedule uh, instead of a seven-week conference schedule. We have eight teams in our league now in the Southern Conference, so we basically divided it into two divisions. We have a red division and a blue division. Our division is Mercer, um, the Citadel, um, and ETSU, and then us, of course, and then so... Um, yeah, so that, that just helped us, you know, kind of control the situation a little bit more. We voted on it. The ADs voted on it. And, you know, we feel like we can control our league more than non-conference opponents. So it gives us the best chance to play 30 games there and then try to play as many games as we can um, in the non-conference realm. So, um, you know, I know we're talking about, you probably talked to everybody about this. I mean, you're getting emails every day constantly of people canceling games, needing games, midweek games, weekend series, all this stuff. So um, we're just excited. We have 52 scheduled right now, and that's pretty good compared to a lot of people across the country. 
no question about it, Coach. That was one of the things I was going to ask you about is uh, the COVID situation. Uh, we are we're in a world now that I was telling everybody we used to be in a pen world. You could kind of pen things in, and now it seems like you better have a pencil and eraser ready because that's got to be frustrating as a coach. I know the little a bit of coaching I've done in the past where you have a game plan, you're all set, and now it just seems like just getting your guys to uh, through a week without COVID-19 positive test or – uh, getting them to the game is a win uh, versus the actual strategy of the uh, what are you going to do on the baseball diamond? Yeah, it, it, it's been interesting. I'll tell you, um, you know, the protocol, you know, the different you know things you have to do with the testing and everything like that. Um, you know, so far, you know, keep our fingers crossed, but we've done a good job this semester. Um, you know, hopefully that'll still stay that way when we get into these, you know, on the road bubbles and, you um, you know, what we're doing is, you know, we have a, um, our, our, one of our assistant coaches, Jeff Lavin, had a really good idea. Um, and we're hitting basically three different weeks where we're going into a bubble on Wednesday, playing a midweek game and then staying in the bubble and going into the weekend series. So like that, that midweek game would be somewhere in the area or on the way to that weekend opponent, if that makes sense. So, so that's what we're doing for three of our weeks. And, um, you know, hopefully that'll help the situation. I know you guys have a rich tradition at Western Carolina going back many, many years. One a person that we know we talked to you before in the past is Keith LeClear, but uh, how are things as far as I know the fans are concerned? Uh, another question, two-part question, first about your tradition, but also uh, keeping with the tradition, are you going to have fans this year? So right now, I mean, uh, I believe it's like 6% of total um, so basically it's the parents. I mean, that's the yeah. parents of both teams from what I'm hearing. Um, it may open up as the season goes on. Uh, there may be a few special guests that are invited in or whatever, but um, that's what I'm hearing here at our venue. I'm not sure of other ones that we're going to, um, but, you know, hopefully we can get that rolling. As far as the tradition, I mean, rich tradition, 23 SOCON championships, um, you know, just, just an amazing situation. I mean, I, you know, Jack Leggett, Keith LeClaire, Rodney Hennon, Todd Raleigh, I mean, all these guys, that, you know, uh, you know, came before, uh, before me, um, you know, have a lot of respect for them. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. And then, you know, we get a lot of guys that, that come here, you know, wanting to be part of that tradition. And, you know, that, that's the, the thing that is a shame because, um, you know, we really draw well here and we have good crowd support and stuff like that. So, um, that's a little bit of a home field advantage that, you know, it's going to be, you know, kind of taken away probably this, you know, this semester and we just want to play though. So that's, that's, that's the number one thing. What's the coldest game that you've ever played home? Uh, is there a game that you can remember that say, Oh my God, I, I, as much as I love baseball, this is rough. There, there's been a few, um, you know, it, I tell people this all the time though, our weather is so much better than people think here. Yeah, that's the, sure. that's what people don't understand. This is not Boone. Um, this is, you know, we're at 2,200 feet and we're almost in Georgia, almost in South Carolina. So, you know, I coached at Wake Forest for six years. The weather there is not, it, 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 this, our weather's way better than, than the Winston-Salem area. I'll just tell you that right now. Um, we just don't get the wind and the, you know, the cold coming off the Boone, you know, mountains up there. Right you know, hitting, hitting that area, the triad or whatever. Um, and people think I'm crazy when I say that, but I'm just saying I mean, we average six, six inches of snow a year. And, uh, you know, we were out there yesterday, our guys were in short sleeve shirts, you know? So, wow. I mean, it, you know, if at the start of practice, they were like, this is just too, too warm out here, coach. I got to shed layers. And, you know, you get there in the morning and like today we lifted in the morning and it was 23 degrees this morning. And then, uh, you go to the field, it'll be 50 and 50 feels really well, you know, in the sun or whatever. So, um, and then, you know, when that sun goes down, it gets cold again. You know? So uh, the mountains, you know, you don't really have that flat where the, you know, the heat can retain in the mountains. It's, it's more angled. So I guess that's the reason, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's the weather's really, really nice here. Uh, I think that's one of the most underrated parts of this region. Um south of Asheville. I think Asheville's weather, you know, is a little cooler than ours. Um, but yeah, as far as cold games, there's some cold night games now, I'll tell you that. I mean, when that sun goes down, it, it, it definitely cools off. We had a game, to, to answer your question, uh, we had a game against Washington State here. 
2013, I believe. You know, the Washington State flew here and played us, and then we played them there. And um, in the ninth inning, it was basically a blizzard. I mean, it was it was coming down. Our closer's out there. We're winning the game, and he's trying to like beat the blizzard to the end of the game, which he did. But I think the last the last out was a fly ball to center field, and it was hard to see the baseball. And um, yeah, it was probably it was pretty cold for sure. You know, I'd say probably 25. The coldest game I've ever been involved in though was at Nebraska in 2017. We went to Nebraska and played them a three game set. Hmm. And the Sunday game, we showed up at the field. It was 16 degrees. Wow. They delayed the game. We got there at like 10 o'clock in the morning. They delayed the game until like one o'clock in the afternoon. We hit inside and it got up to like maybe 25 or 26 was the high with a 40 mile an hour wind. I mean, it was crazy. And the wind was blowing dead in. And um, I mean, it was, that was, that was probably the coldest, you know, wind chill game and I've ever been involved in for sure. Adele, let's talk some baseball. That's why we're here. And mm -hmm. um, how about uh, as far as your, one of the most important things with baseball is pitching. How's your pitching look, looking this year? I'm really impressed with our pitching. I mean, I'm really impressed with our pitching. We, uh, we have some, some, some big arms on our staff and we've, you know, we've invested a lot of money and time into that. And coach Sandifer has done a really good job. He's my former player played here on two championship teams in 13, 14 and came back a couple of years ago. And he's our pitching coach, head assistant, recruiting coordinator, doing a really nice job as a former Catamount and you know, player now coach. And um, yeah, we feel really good about our, our, our rotation, our bullpen, um, a big strength of our program right now. So, um, you know, we, we, we struggled the last couple of years. I mean, you know, everyone will be honest with about that. And we felt like we really needed to do a much better job with our, our pitching situation. And, and we've invested in that. And, um, you know, the fruits of that labor, recruiting, getting on the road, doing that development, everything like that, uh, that's going to pay off big for us this year, um, you know, in the end, no doubt. How many guys do you think you can count on as far as uh, I know there's always the weekend rotation midweek, but how many guys do you see as potential starters? Uh, well, we have, you know, I, I, I'm looking at like five or six guys right now that I think could start for us. Um, we're very locked in with our number one guy right now, Zebby Matthews. I mean, uh, he played at Walter state. He led them to the world series uh, in junior college world series in Colorado. Um, I believe last year when we got shut down, he had 30 strikeouts and two walks. I mean, he's really good, really wow. good, really good player. Um, he's from Cullowee, which is oh, wow. interesting. Yeah. And um, so he's a local, local kid. He's awesome. He's a good player. Um, you know, six, five righty. And, you know, we, we, we feel really good about our rotation. They're very older. You know, they're, they're older now they're experienced. You know, we, we played a lot of young guys, two and three years ago. Um, and all those guys are older now. And I believe, you know, a lot of people don't really know our team because, you know, a lot of those guys were young two years ago. And then obviously last year we were shut down and just, start, just started to get into it. And, um, you know, we basically have our whole roster back that we've had for three years now. So and with the addition of, you know, a bunch of new players. So it's, uh, it, it's exciting. Um, and then our, I like our, I really like our bullpen. You know, we're very deep in the pen and we have a lot of experience in there too. So, and a lot of velocity. So, you know, we had, you know, several guys, I'd say probably 11, 12 guys and 90 above last weekend and, you know, three, four guys in the mid nineties. So off the mound in the Rapsodo. So it's, uh, it's exciting for sure. No doubt. I was just thinking about as a coach, you, know, you never can have enough arms, right? And then oh. this thing called COVID-19, I guess you're like going, God, we need about 50 pitchers just on the staff alone. I think we have like 20 something pitchers, but you know, like it's, it's, you know, it's, and, and you know, it's also because, you know, we returned a couple seniors too, which was a blessing. And, um, you know, one of our top relievers was a, is a COVID senior, basically he would have been a senior last year, but got to come back. And he's, he's a really good kid out of Chicago. And then, uh, so, you know, we did lose one of our seniors last year, signed pro with the Padres. So, um, but he would, he would have had a chance to come back too. Um, 
So, but yeah, we, we only have, uh, I think a lot of people have like 45, some people have 50 players, 49, something like that. We have 38 players, 30, 38 players on our team right now. So it's not too bad. Not at all. How about uh, as far as the infield or outfield, if as far as the defensive uh, side of the ball, is there, how about? Yeah, um, catching wise, you know, we the mainstay Luke Robinson, who plays first base and catch. He's one of the best players in our league. He's been, been a really good player for us. Um, and then we have a, a, a couple new catchers, a junior college catcher and a high school catcher that we, we really like that are, that are in the program um, that will, you know, surely can contribute in a big way big way um no doubt we like to play luke at first base more than more than catch and and um so that'll that'll really help out back there and then uh in the infield uh we have two experienced players that are you know both junior senior ish covid you just you know it's like a repeat deal yeah. and then we have two freshman infielders that we really like one out of pennsylvania and one out of atlanta um we're playing the atlanta kid um at shortstop, he's, he's preseason. One of, I guess, somebody said preseason freshman of the year or something like that. I don't know, but someone else's opinion. So we'll see. But um, he's a good player. They're both good, they're both good players, and uh, we like those guys. And then in the outfield, we have a bunch of experience. We have the returning player of the year in our league, uh, who was a third base. We we moved him to the outfield. Um, Justice Bigby, and he's the player of the year in nineteen as a sophomore. So. He's a um, a senior, but obviously really only a junior, I guess. Um, but, yeah, he's a good player. I mean, he was the Northwoods Player of the Year. He was the Silicon Player of the Year. Uh, he was a freshman All-American. He was the freshman of the year in our league, you know, three years ago, four years ago, I guess, whatever. And, um, yeah, he's a good player coming back. And then, you know, Dalen Annie's a returning player, Bryson Parks, Emmanuel Wilder. These guys are all old now. So, you know, Seth Graves, they're all seniors or juniors out in the outfield. Um, we have, um, so it's, it's, uh, it's exciting to have these older guys and you know, have that experience. No doubt. What about as far as the bats are concerned with your lineup? Uh, you guys have uh, always, you're winning championships, so you've got to have the pitching and the bats. How about the bats? Oh, I like it. I mean, we've got a nice blend of left-handed and right-handed hitting. Um, you know, some speed at the top. Um, you know, we, we feel we feel really good about it. Um, you know, just the experience is the key. You know, I, I think you you know you can't underestimate. You know, the, the the abs that you've had in the college career, and you you know you've been out there. That being said, you know we we have some freshmen that I believe are going to make a huge impact right away. Um, you know, on the defensive side of the ball too, from a pitching standpoint, and then from an offensive side and, and defense uh, position player wise, uh, you know, I, th I feel like there's, you know, four or five young kids that, that we could make an impact right away. I think the, 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 the um, and across the board in college baseball, the class that probably benefited the most from this COVID situation was, was the freshman class last year. You know, they got to go through the fall. They got to play, you know, a handful of games, get in there, you know, do some good things or make mistakes or whatever and learn from that and then come back and be a freshman again. So um, those guys for, you know, being freshmen right now uh, have a lot of experience too across the board, you know, in college baseball. I was going to ask you earlier, I forgot, you just triggered my memory to ask you that very thing that it looks like that college baseball is going to be really, really good. Uh, it's kind of like a, I hate to use the term, the cliche blessing in disguise, but it's kind of a blessing as far as I would think with, for experience for you and also for player development, a whole bunch of stuff. These guys have had a chance to unfortunately have a year off, but I would think their individual work, um, before, not even being with the team. And now that they've come back and you've had fall ball and now you're having the, I guess, winter workout, spring, whatever you want to call them right before the season starts, uh, you guys are going to be, I would think, even more prepared than ever. Well, it depends. I mean, you know, how did you, how did you take COVID? Did you just, you know, sleep in every day and yeah. not do anything or did you, did you work? And, and I believe our guys, they worked, you know, cause I mean, they came back and guys were throwing harder and they're stronger and their bodies look good and, and stuff like that. And then, you know, we had 58 days off between semesters, um, which wow. is the longest I've ever been involved in in 34 years of coaching. So, um, 
you know, you had to, you know, stay, you know, self-motivated kids. That's the, that's the key probably to get off the ground running, you know, at the beginning of the season, because, um, you know, just due to COVID, you, you know, it's a two month layoff, I guess. Um, and then obviously several months from March to, you know, September, I guess. Uh, so no summer baseball, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, if, if you had self-motivated kids, mature kids that got after it, I think you could definitely benefit from the from that situation. No question about it. As far as the uh, – quickly, I know we're running out of time, but as far as your uh, conference is concerned with the SOCON, how, are, um, how, how does that stack out? Who do you like outside of your club? Well, I think our, our league is, is, is loaded this year. I really do. I think we have an outstanding league. Um, you know, Merce from the Sanford, I guess people are picking them. Um, and they've, they've, it's merited. I mean, they, you know, Mercer had a really young team last year or the two years before those guys are all back and very, very good. Um, uh, Sanford always is, is right there, ready to go. They, um, you know, their pitching has been outstanding in this league for years. You know, Casey does a really good, Casey Dunn does a really nice job down there. Um, you know, UNC Greensboro, great program. Uh, you know, ETSU, they've, they, you know, they hired the assistant that took Stony Brook to Omaha and he knows what he's doing, you know, as the head coach there. So they're doing a really nice job investing money, brand new stadium, stuff like that. Uh, you know, VMI, I mean, I think Hadra does an excellent job up there. You know, uh, the Citadel, the Tony Skoll, experienced guy that's been coaching for a long time. It's just, I think our league is, is just at, a, at, a, at an all time high. I'd like to get the national respect that I think it deserves if, you know, we can, you know, do some damage on a, on a you know, midweek wise or other school, you know, that we play in non-conference. I think our league could, could show well in the tournament always does. We just have to, um, you know, get our RPI up there. Wofford. I mean, they're doing a great job with their program, you know, TI, uh, their, their assistant coach Seth is a good friend of ours. I mean, they, they do, they're really doing a nice job down there too. And if you look at the wins over the last few years in our league, non-conference, it's um, pretty impressive. No doubt, coach. I know that uh, a few years ago they had the low cost tuition for Western Carolina. If there's anybody listening right now, there's maybe seniors, maybe uh, people that want to come uh, looking to when I, my freshman year, I, I went to Lee's McCray college in Banner Elk, not mm -hmm. from Boone. You, you, uh, I got a scholarship. Good skiing school. up there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love to ski. So that was, I was so you, do I. Uh, great skiing up there and uh, great people up there. But anyway, uh, why would you tell people to come to Cullowee and, and Western Carolina? It's beautiful up there. And I uh, can't wait to whenever I've been telling my kids, whenever we can travel again, we're definitely going to come your way. Awesome place. Great place to live. Very, very, it's just beautiful, safe, affordable. Um, our campus is booming right now. I mean, we're at almost 13,000 students. There's 500 mil yeah, $500 million in projects going on right now. Um, this place is a, is a booming, booming um, university. And one of the reasons is NC Promise. I mean, in-state yeah. tuition is $1,000. And out-of-state tuition is $5,000. So, you know, the cost of attendance is way down of what yeah. it used to be just a couple of years ago and that NC promise just kicked in last year was our first class that we had with that. So, um, it's pretty cool. I mean, this is a great place. I've been here. It's my 14th year. Um, you know, after being in the ACC for 18 years and, um, yeah, it's, it, it it's just, a, it's just a really neat community. Um, and it is an up and coming university as far as the, um, you know, the infrastructure, the education and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's been around a long time, but I believe where, where we're headed right now is, is very, very positive um, you know, position. Very excited. Are there things to do around there that people would, uh, would know about? Oh, <laughs> if you're into outdoors, this Disney yeah. world, you know what I mean? Mountain biking is world-class um, kayaking, fishing, fly fishing. Uh, we have one of the top uh, rivers for fly fishing in the United States that runs right behind the university. And uh, so if you want to, if you're into that uh, hiking, I mean, all kinds of outdoor activities. Um, it's just an amazing uh, place to live outside of baseball and outside of 
the university. And then as far as athletics, I mean, if you come to school here, you'll bleed purple the rest of your life. So it's uh, the alumni, you know, they, they have a strong like love for, the, for uh, their university, for sure. Well, enjoy the visit. I'll tell you what, I'm looking forward. Very excited. You make me now chomping at the bit to get to the western part of the state. I'm in the eastern part of the state uh, near Greenville, so can't wait to be able to travel safely. We're going to do that whenever uh, my family, when we deem it to be safe as far as uh, COVID-19 is concerned. Hopefully we can get through maybe the summertime or fall, but we can get yeah. back there. But coach, thank you so much. Good luck this season. I know you guys are going to do well. Uh, I know you've been working hard and I know you can't wait to the 19th. Yeah, David, thank you. I appreciate, appreciate this uh, opportunity. And, um, you know, we're just so blessed to just be involved in college baseball this year and, and get it going again. And, and, um, you know, just, it's, it's, it's very exciting for everybody.